Is SpaceX Starlink profitable or failing? Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time today. We have a little bit of fireside. So good, so good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today's the technology day. We're gonna be talking about SpaceX, Starlink, and profitability or not. Will they be around or won't they? I've been getting a lot of questions lately, especially on the lives and through email and DMs. You know, Joe, should I get involved with SpaceX, Starlink? Are they going to be profitable? Because I'm hearing in the news, they're not profitable. I don't wanna like get involved and then end up not having a system at all and pay 600 bucks, let's say, to get started. And I, I feel you, I understand it, because it is expensive to get involved with SpaceX Starlink. The initial kit is $599 here in the US. If you get a refurbished, you can get it for $399. I did a whole video on that last week. Anyways, the monthly service is $120 a month for just regular residential, so it's not cheap. So I understand where you're coming from. There was a really good article that I was reading from The Motley Fool, and they talked about Bloomberg. And Bloomberg was talking about how, well, SpaceX Starlink was putting out information that really wasn't correct. They were kind of like cooking the books, so to speak. And The Motley Fool spoke about this, and I thought that it was really great because they broke it down. That's what The Motley Fool does. Do I agree with everything The Motley Fool does? Absolutely not. But in this case, it was actually a really good article. So I want to read some of this to you. It's a little bit lengthy, so kind of bear with me. But it's really good information. Then, of course, I want to give you my commentary on it. And then I want to hear from you. What do you think about it? So before I get into this article, I want to say that if you haven't downloaded any of my ebooks, consider doing so. They are 100% free just for you being here. Go to jchristina.com forward slash books. Also, if you enjoy the content, even a little bit, throw it a thumbs up. That'll be very helpful. If you're not subscribed, consider doing so. And if you are, thank you so much. Click this little button over here so when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. When you do click that button, click all. That somehow helps. That's what YouTube has told me. Please do that. <laughs> also, if you want to say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little thank you button down here. You could click on that, give a dollar or two. That would be fantastic. If not, that's perfectly fine. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. If you want more Starlink content like this, I put together about 265, 268 videos so far just on SpaceX Starlink. Helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to buy, what not to buy, how to use things, but also the why behind everything. This channel is always about the why. And finally, if you're looking for a VPN, check out the guys over there at Pure VPN. They've given us a promo code, which is jchristina, or you could use the URL jchristina.com forward slash VPN, and you're gonna get 15% off at checkout, additional percent off. So give them a look-see. So let's jump right into this article. It starts out by saying, at last report, SpaceX Starlink had some 2.6 million customers around the globe. Bloomberg didn't say specifically how many hundreds of dollars it thinks SpaceX is losing on each of the customer terminals, which sells for $499 a piece. That's incorrect information. They actually sell for $599 a piece. We'll let that slip because it's not as pertinent. You'll see in just a second. But let's just say that each terminal sold lost $200 for SpaceX times 2.6 million. That would be right around a loss of $520 million on hardware since SpaceX Starlink began operating. This year, our friends at Payload Research forecast that SpaceX Starlink will add a further 1.5 million customers, implying ongoing losses on hardware of another $300 million. That is not an insubstantial sum, but according to Payload's Starlink forecast for 2024, the company will generate more than $6.8 billion in revenue this year. $6.8 billion. That's up 50% from $4.2 billion in 2023. And Starlink is hoping to generate operating profit margin of 60% on its revenue, $4.1 billion crazy numbers. Subtract the 300 million from 4.1 billion and 
Well, I don't know about you, but it seems to me that Starlink should probably earn quite a tidy profit from Starlink this year, even if it does lose $300 million just on its hardware. You see, what SpaceX is essentially running here is a razor and blades business model. SpaceX may lose a bit of money on its razor or its terminals, but it makes up for that loss many times over by selling razor blades i.e. internet service, to make the razors useful. And a business model that served Gillette, for example, very well for well over a hundred years. And that serves the internet companies like Comcast and Verizon pretty well also when they give away their modems for free today and in order to charge for internet service tomorrow. I think it will work out quite well for SpaceX and Starlink going forward. It continues with objections, and this is kind of interesting too. Where Bloomberg came up with this information. Now you may think, fine, so SpaceX sells terminals at a loss and makes back the loss by selling SpaceX Starlink internet service. But surely Bloomberg had other reasons to argue that SpaceX's profitability claims are, quote, suspect, right? They couldn't have hung their hat entirely on this one thing or this one single objection, could they? Not really. And you're right. Bloomberg does have another criticism. Namely, it argues that in communications with investors, SpaceX often strips out the cost of launching Starlink satellites to orbit, making its profits look better than otherwise would. And it's true, that would be a pretty big line item to ignore cost-wise, except for one fact. This is SpaceX that we're talking about here, and unlike most satellite communication companies, SpaceX owns its own rockets and can set whatever prices it wants to launch them. Very good point. Furthermore, SpaceX rockets are reusable, and because the cost of launching reusable rockets many times eventually falls to approach the cost of just refueling the rockets, which is about $200,000 per launch or less than $10,000 per satellite launch. Think about it. If you had 20 satellites, right? $200,000 makes sense. It'd be $10,000 per satellite. Well, they're launching 23 satellites. So it'd be even less than that $10,000 mark. Let's call it what, 8,500, 87, nine grand, somewhere on there per satellite. Pretty damn cheap, pretty cheap. Those launch costs arguably don't amount to much to spread across a user base of 2.6 million and soon to be 4.1 million paying customers. Absolutely. Long story short, it may be true, as Bloomberg claims, that calculating the profitability of Starlink is more of an art than a science, but it's also true that Starlink turns into a $6.8 billion a year business in 2024. The costs that Bloomberg is complaining about are going to amount to mere rounding errors on a terrifically profitable satellite internet business. Granted, we're going to have to wait and see for Starlink to officially IPO and release its financials for the public examination to be 100% sure on how profitable it is. But for the time being, everything I've read tells me that when Elon Musk says Starlink has reached break even and SpaceX is on the path to profitability, he's probably telling the truth. This is what always happens with Bloomberg. Bloomberg, you know, they, they kind of like, they mint stuff and then they cut things certain ways and then they bend things. And I'm glad that the Motley Fool got it right here and they dug a little bit deeper. I've been saying this from the very beginning. People just don't understand it, but Starlink will be ubiquitous. It will be absolutely everywhere. I said that from the first video that I made, right from the very beginning. I said, this is just something special. I said, if this thing would IPO tomorrow, I would buy in immediately, right? And I don't give stock advice. I just said that and I don't own Tesla. I don't own any of his businesses, right? So I'm 100% unbiased, but I know technology. I've been a system administrator for many years, more years than I want to tell you guys, okay? I know this inside and out, and I'm telling you, this will be everywhere. What do I mean by everywhere, right? 
When I say everywhere, I mean everywhere, meaning everywhere is everywhere. Right now, we see a good chunk coming to SpaceX Starlink from the government. They're also making a crazy amount of money on the maritime folks out there in aviation. Maritime, every boat over 90 feet is going to have Starlink on board. They're not going to use this Iridium and all the rest of these things. It's all going away. You can have this little flat device up there. You're not even going to see it. That's going to be the end of it, okay? All these other companies, they could just forget it. They're out of business. When it comes to aviation, to put one of those Starlinks on the top of a plane, let's say a Learjet, is about $125,000 to $150,000. Plus, the monthly is about $25,000 plus. We're talking a lot of money. All the planes are going to have them, period. I'm telling you, I promise you. All right. Now, looking at 2.6 million people that there's currently, or actually think it's 2.7, 2.8 as of the making of this video, current customers, that is projected to 4.1 million before year's end. That is nuts. That is a ton. How much money are you making at $120 a pop or even $90 a pop? It doesn't even matter, right? It doesn't even matter. Now, another thing, think about this. I've said this also from the very beginning. When I say it will be ubiquitous, when it will be everywhere, when you will find it on the streets everywhere. I predicted long time ago that every single Tesla car will have an antenna built into the roof. You won't see it. It will be there. And every single Tesla will be a hub, a high speed internet hub for its passengers, for its owner. That means that that car is outside anyways. As long as it has a view of the sky and it's not inside of a tunnel, guess what? It has high-speed internet access anywhere. You can literally take your Tesla, pull it up to your friend's house, go inside the house, and keep using the same internet that you are using before from your car. You don't even have to ask your friend or colleague for his Wi-Fi password. You're using it from the car, all right? So what can they do with this? Think about it. What can they do with that? Well, if we have Starlinks in LEO, in low Earth orbit, forming this mesh network, this massive mesh network, imagine the mesh network that can be formed with every Tesla car on Earth. Now, I don't know if that's going to be in the EULA, <laughs> that we're going to be using some of your data to kind of give it to other people or whatever, but it's possible. And if it is possible, now every Tesla will propagate the signal to the mesh. IoT on crack. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I hope you found this fascinating. I know I did. I had a lot of fun with this. It was great information. And I hope it gives you a feeling of security that you know that if you go and purchase SpaceX Starlink, they're not going anywhere. And the service is just going to get better and better and better as the years go on. So that's my take on it. What say you? What do you think? Down below, I want to hear from you. Anyways, guys, many thanks for being here. Throw the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're not, if you are. Thank you. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the many years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. Check out my merch. Check out my tees. Pick something up. I would appreciate it. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Stay connected. And we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.